Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2014 beta video. And in this video, I'm just going to quickly explain how you can get Orbiter 2014 beta and install it on your own system. Now, it's not the case that we can just go to the website, download the zip file, and unzip it to our desktop or wherever, like we would do with Orbiter 2010. There's a little bit more involved, but it's really easy. So if you want to check out this new version of Orbiter, here's what you have to do. Let me go ahead and switch camera views here. Now the files are stored in a developer's repository. It's a it's a it's a it's a server that contains all the development files, and you have to get access to that server and then download those files. And the way we do that is by using uh, this system called SVN. And a few years ago, I could have explained more to you more detail to you about what all this meant, but it's been so long since I've really used this type of thing that I'm not really well versed on it. But I will tell you that SVN uh, client software is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like any other client software, you know, like if you wanted to uh, view images, for example, you could, there are tons of options for viewing images. There are, you know, dozens and dozens of image viewing programs. And with SVN, it's not really any different. There are dozens of different programs that you can get uh, to get access to that repository and download it. There are command line programs, so if, and if you know how to use command line stuff, then you certainly don't need a video from me to tell you how to do this. So this video is more focused on people that don't really know their way around the computer too well. So the one that I use, and the reason I'm using this one, it was the first one that came up when I did a Google search, is this uh, Tortos, I guess I'm saying it right, or Tortius SVN. And I believe I read that it's open source. It's, you know, it's definitely free. Yeah, it's also open source. And that's usually a good thing because it means the software, uh, the code for the software is available for anybody to look at. So there's, you know, that doesn't, the, the odds of it having, you know, spyware or stuff like that in it is pretty much non-existent. So it's, it's, it's a good trusted source. Now I'll put a link to this in the description down below, but simply uh, go to this website, click on downloads, and then pick your download, you know, if you have 32-bit Windows or if you have 64-bit. Uh, once you have it downloaded, just simply install it. You know, it's a binary executable, so you'll just be able to click the EXE to install it. So then once you have it installed, uh, go somewhere on your computer and make a directory for Orbiter 2014 beta to exist. In this example, I'm just going to put it here on my desktop, and you'll notice that I've already got uh, two directories made. Uh, this one contains the full, the full uh, high resolution textures, and this one just has the low resolution textures. But let's do, let's create another one. So I'm just going to go new folder, and we'll call it Orbiter 2014 Beta uh, YT Video, just so I know what I'm doing, what this one exists for. Then you just set that, once you have the that Orbiter or the the Tortoise. SVN client installed, the way it works is really pretty easy. Once you have your folder created, you actually right click on the folder and it gives you this contextual menu for uh, for for the Tortoise SVN option. So you don't actually run the program. You just right click on the folder that you want to put your Orbiter 2014 into, then come down here and just uh, do SVN checkout. And the first time you do that, it's going to tell you you know, that you, uh, that you don't have any repositories selected. And the one that you're going to want is what I've got right here, and I'll put this in the description down below so you don't have to try to remember it, but you just type this in exactly like you see it here. It kind of looks like a web URL, but instead of HTTP, you have SVN at the beginning. So you type that in, and then you just hit OK, and it will go out to the, uh, to the Internet, to the tubes, and it will grab all those files from the developer's uh, repository, you know, Martin's uh, repository, and it's just downloading them one by one. And the good thing about this is that as these files are updated, you know, because this is a work in progress, you can actually re-update your Orbiter 2014 very easily just by coming back to this folder, right-clicking on it, and then just doing an SVN update. So let's say that uh, there's a one of the files is determined that it's corrupt, or there's something missing or something bad. You, instead of downloading the whole thing over again and unzipping it, you can just come back here, right-click on the folder, and do a do an update, 
and it will update just that one file. It won't download the whole kitchen sink all over again. It will just get that one file. So once we get that downloaded here, we'll take a look. And it doesn't take very long because the core, the core distribution isn't that big. Uh, you know, it's only, um, it's already done. I'm not actually sure how big it is, so let's actually check. So let's hit OK. Once it's done, you'll notice that this is available. So let's hit OK. And let's check the size of this folder real quick. Uh, it's actually a little bigger than I thought it would be. It's 417 megabyte for that uh, core core distribution. Uh, so again, let's say you know a week or two has gone by and you want to check and see if anything's been updated. Uh, right click the folder and come down here to SVN update and click that and it will go through and you know do a complete update if there's if there's any file that's been updated you'll see it in the list and, and of course here nothing has been updated because we just we just installed it so that's it for the basic for the basic part but you also need uh, three or four files in order to actually be able to use Orbiter 2014 beta. You don't have to get those high resolution um, textures because those are large. It's a, it's a 30 gigabyte download just to get the textures. And then once you unpack the textures, you're looking at closer to 80 gigabyte on the hard drive. This folder right here is 80 gig. So if you want to start checking out Orbiter 2014 and just use the low res textures, you can do that. And you have to get the low res textures anyway, so it's a good idea to uh, get those. And I'll put a link in the description down below for where to where to get those. But it, for the time being, we can go to uh, this folder where I've already got them downloaded. And you're going to be looking at these four. It, well, you don't have to have all four of them, but at the very least, you're going to want Earth Cloud and Earth Low. And you can see these aren't really small files. You know, Earth Cloud is 300 meg. Earth Low resolution is 130 meg. Mars is almost, you know, 440 meg, and then the Moon is a 500 meg by itself. But if you, for starters, just to be, just to check out Earth, uh, you want to get Earth Cloud and Earth Low. And if for some reason you just wanted to check out the Moon, then you would only need uh, Moon Low. But I think you probably want to have Earth also because when you start a scenario, you're probably going to start on Earth. And if you don't have those textures, I'm not sure what would happen if it would crash Orbiter or not. Um, you know what, actually, let's find out. So before I even install these textures, let's actually just look at the core distribution, see what happens if we run it without even putting the textures in. I've read a little bit on Orbiter form. Some people did this and it worked, and other people did it and it crashed their uh, crashed Orbiter. So of course, the first time we run it, it's going to run through the initial setup process, so we'll let it do that. Just takes it a moment. It's currently testing DirectX. And everything's okay, so let's go ahead and launch Orbiter. And uh, ch uh, choose your system uh, settings in the in the video set. So let me get that done here. I think for me it's this one. And we'll do window. I guess that's fine. And then I'm not going to too much worry about the parameters at the moment. Okay, so let's just launch a scenario. And of course we won't have sound at this point because we haven't installed have not yet installed, um, you know, Dan Steph's sound. So it does look like it will run even if you don't download the textures. At least it runs on my system. But of course, everything, without having any textures, everything is just going to look like a white blob. But at the very least, it does look like it runs. But that's just on my system. Again, I think I read on Orbiter form that other people have tried this. And I guess maybe depending on your video card or whatever, if it doesn't have the textures, it might just actually crash Orbiter outright. But in this case, it's actually working. So let's go ahead and exit Orbiter. And one of the changes when you press F4, it brings up this um, sort of transparent dialog box. I actually like this a little bit better. So then we'll exit. Now let's go ahead and install those textures. The way we do that is pretty simple. If you have, if you have a past experience with installing anything related to Orbiter, then this will work exactly the same. Let's start with Earth low resolution because it's the smallest. I recommend using 7-zip, specifically 7-zip and not just any generic zip program, certainly not the zip 
certainly not the one that comes built into Windows. For example, don't do this. If I double click on the the uh, low earth low and then take that and drag and drop it into my folder, that will work. But um, Windows zip is especially inefficient and it doesn't matter for small files that are like a megabyte or two megabyte. When, but when we get up to these larger files that are several hundred meg, it'll save you a lot of time if you use 7-zip. So I'm going to right click the file, go to 7-zip, and I'm going to say extract files. Now I'm going to tell it where I want it to extract to, which for me is going to be c colon backslash users david desktop orbiter 2014 beta yt did I call it video or video yeah okay plural not plural I mean and then I will say okay and now it's going to take a bit of time here to extract those files over to the uh, to this orbiter directory and real quick let me show you just what would happen if I didn't use 7-zip if I instead used if I instead used the Windows uh, program so let's start another tab instance here let's go inside that and let's say that I'm going to just unzip it right here into this directory so I'm just going to drag and drop it and just look at how much slower Windows internal zip handler is you know you can just see how you know it's poking along it's last 45 seconds to go so I'm just going to cancel that because obviously I don't actually want to do that action but I just want to show why you want to use why you want to use 7-zip instead. So now let's extract the clouds. So Earth Cloud, right click, 7-zip, extract files. And it did not remember the location, so I should have copy pasted it. Actually, you know what I think I might be able to do is right click here. Can I copy the location? If I if I right click up here, I can just do copy. And then I can paste that into here so I don't have to type it all out again. Yeah, like that. Now, OK. And now we're extracting the clouds. Uh, you do want to have the clouds as well. If you don't, then what happens when you get up into orbit? Uh, Earth looks like a white ball of nothing. So you, you need the clouds, the Earth cloud file, and you need the Earth low resolution. OK, now that we have those two extracted, let's take a look at how Orbiter looks let's go ahead and load it back up and we're just going to go back to that go back to that quick start mission if i can find it there it is something else i'll mention you'll notice over here when you pick a mission now instead of just having sort of plain text on this side you have the option of including sort of this formatted uh, text which is pretty nice because whereas before, like all the missions were, let me see if I can find an old one. All the missions were just like this, or all the text in the help area was just plain text. Now it has, you know, formatted text, and it can even include a photo. So if you go to the current state, for example, the current state shows you a snapshot of, of a photographic, uh, basically a screenshot of what it looked like the last time you were, what last time you were there. So that's a pretty nice addition as well. All right, let's go back to the uh, quick start launch orbiter. Now that we've got some planet textures, of course, these are the low res versions. And I'm noticing that the uh, Delta glider appears to be floating above the runway a little bit. It's one of the issues I was talking about in the last video, the quick look at 2014, where, uh, where the bases don't quite sit properly. But now that we have the clouds and we have the textures for Earth, you can see you know the earth looks looks like something but if we look at the moon let's uh, press F3 go to location I guess that'll be fine and we don't have any textures yet for the moon so if we zoom out of course it's nighttime here so let's go to the other side so the moon just looks like a big white ball of nothing because there is no texture there. So let's uh, let's add textures for the moon as well. Let's go ahead and exit out of Orbiter. And again, when it, you know current state, it saves a screenshot of where you just were. So one more time, right-click the uh, texture, 
package, the zip file. Go to 7-zip, go to extract files, put in the exact directory location that it's going to. In my case, it's that directory. Then OK. Then give 7-zip a moment to do its thing. This one's the largest of them all, so it will take the longest. It's 500 meg. And if you use the if you use Windows internal zip extractor, then this will take a really long time. So we'll just give that a moment to finish up here. And while that's extracting, we can reload Orbiter here. And I can do a side-by-side. Uh, -side. Let me bring this up and set it in this corner so I know when it's done. I could do a side-by-side -side look at Orbiter 2010 versus Orbiter 2014 beta. There isn't a lot that's changed yet in like the parameters and such. If we look here, you know, the realism settings, you can see all four realism settings are the same. The uh, perturbations. We have one new one in 2014 beta. It's the atmospheric wind effects. You can see that doesn't exist in Orbiter 2010. So in Orbiter uh, 2014, I, I've known this for a while because Martin's been talking about it on Orbiter Forum. He's adding, you know, wind effects. Uh, so like on Earth and probably Mars and, you know, a few of the other planets that have atmosphere, uh, you can actually have, you know, your flight path will actually be affected by wind for the for a change. And that's really about the only change I saw because I kind of went through each of the tabs and, you know, all the everything is basically the same. You know, if you compare the left side to the right side, you know, general effects, there's really nothing that's different. If we go to modules, of course, I have this is my main ins installation. So I've got a lot of other modules here. If we take a look at the video tab, you know, again, everything appears exactly the same. I don't see any differences, not even a single option is different. Uh, well, this is a little bit different over here because I'm using the D3D9 client, whereas over here this is the Angline client, otherwise they would be exactly identical. So that's about it for, you know, for the comparisons between, between the launch pads. Let me go ahead and exit out of there. Let's relaunch. Uh, we'll just launch our current state. And we're already back. Give the textures a moment to draw. Let me warp time forward so the sun's up on this side. Okay, there comes the sun. Let's get it up in the sky a bit. There we go. Okay, so now, yeah, for whatever reason, the uh, shuttle way is kind of looks like it's been buried in the in lunar dust. But now if we zoom out, we can see since we added those, since we added that low resolution texture pack, we now have, you know, we now have a moon that looks like a moon. So very important to get that stuff. You know, one thing I haven't done is I haven't actually checked to see what the other planets look like that we don't have texture packs for. Do, they, do we have any generics yet? So this is Jupiter. Okay, so at least Jupiter, okay, this is still just from 2010. I was just curious, since there is no low resolution texture for for any of the other planets, if we have, you know, at least something to something basic to look at, and we do. So Saturn, I'm assuming, is still from 2010. Yeah, that's the 2010 texture. Yeah. Okay. So that is going to be it for this video. Again, I just wanted to do a quick explanation on how to download download the new Orbiter if you're interested. And again, just come to this website. I'll put a link in the description down below. Download the SVN. Install it. Once you install it, create a directory somewhere on your system that you want to have your Orbiter 2014. Once you have that directory, simply right-click on it, then go to SVN. It'll be, it'll be called Checkout the first time you click on it. So do your SVN checkout, then get those uh, those uh, textures that I mentioned. And again, I'll put a link for those textures in the description down below. And add the textures to the directory. And once you've done that, you'll be able to load it up and check it out. And once you've added the, the low resolution textures, uh, you're looking at a couple of gigabyte on your hard drive. So, so keep that in mind. And remember, we haven't even installed the Mars textures yet. This is just Earth and Moon at this point. Um, last note, Orbiter sound 4.0 does work so you can also copy 
you know, Dan Steps Orbiter Sound into here, double click it and install it into this directory. And then you will have, uh, you will have sound in, in Orbiter 2014. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you in the next video.